In an earlier video, we explored what we could effectively refer to as the double hop problem uh, with chocolatey packages. Now that can be resolved in a number of ways, but we're going to assume that we still have the same problem from the previous video and that we're going to try and resolve it, in this case using the uh, invoke as module. Before that though, I'd like to take the chance to remind you that you can follow us on Twitter, uh, you can also like us on Facebook, and you can also like this video if you do like this video. Now what we're going to do is take a module called invoke command as that's actually up on the PS gallery. So any of you should be able to simply downloading it using the install module from the PowerShell terminal. And then the name of the module, which in this case happens to be invoke hyphen command as. This gives you a couple of options and we're going to go run through basically what are the, the major two that you should be aware of. Uh, and what's done with this is it allows you to impersonate a user account as a full-blown login on the remote machine. Now, it does this basically by using some built-in scheduled job options and a few other bits. Uh, long story short, it works, and, and that's the main thing. Now, the premise behind using it in our example is we want to be able to run the installation of Chocolatey, and we want to do that without it basically telling us that we don't have the credentials. So, what we're going to do is pass those credentials into this module and let it do the logic behind. If you wanted to tear it apart and find out how it works in more detail, feel free to. You can always do the uh, save module as, and just go from there. So in this case, we're just going to do a simple test. So I'm going to go ahead and basically ask for the security context. I'm going to run against my remote server, and I'm using, in this case, the hyphen as system. So this should now return the results using the local system account to run the job, or in this case, our uh, script block. Now, the first thing that some of you may have already noticed is it's not super fast. And that's kind of because of the programmatical logic behind it, and we are in fact returning a fair bit of results. But, for the most part, you can see A, it runs, and B, we now have our results. So, with that in mind, we're going to move on to our next example. And for those of you who watched the previous video, uh, we do a simple SQL install. Now, what I'm going to do here is get our credentials. So. If in case you're wondering, no, that's not my real password. This is just for the test lab. Um, so what we're going to do is do a chocolatey install. So same as we did in the previous video. And instead of doing an invoke command or a enter session, in this case we do the invoke command as. We're going to specify the server. The script block in this case is going to represent, again, the install chocolatey command. And we're going to use those captured domain credentials from the lines above. And that's going to go ahead and run against the remote machine. So what most of you probably will have noticed is in this case we're using the hyphen as user, opposed to earlier where we were using the hyphen as system. So this is the differentiating between having the remote machine account or in the user account which we've captured here. Now we're going to go ahead and fast forward this so that we don't need to sit through the time it takes for a SQL installation. Now, as you can see at the end of this, we get the output of basically everything that was uh, put into the original script and what would have been the output if we hadn't captured it anywhere else. So the end result here is we have the final installation as if we had been logged into the machine, run the script, and then waited for the output at the end. This is all good. So what we should have now here is a finished installation. And we could just hop over to the other machine, check that out. But you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and go to the directory and prove that there's a proper output in it. So the summary file is going to be the one that basically tells us if the installation was successful. Um, you can already see that we do have the SQL Express uh, folders. So we know that at least most of the installation went OK. And if I retrieve the contents of the summary file, we should see that everything finished OK. Um, and this is the thing that we wanted to make sure of. Now, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, um, you know what to do. And as always, subscribe for more great content.